Hello, I'm Frank Romano, Dr. Frank Romano, uh, former uh, tenured associate professor at the University of Paris and a member of the U.S. and French bars. I'd like to address today the massacre that took place on February 29th, 2024, just a while, a few days, days earlier, of starving Palestinians in Gaza. It, went, it happened one day after Carl Sko of the World um, Food Program stated that one in four Palestinians, that's 500,000 Palestinians from Gaza, are going to be starving or are starving, and one out of six children are already seriously malnourished. I might add also that after October 7th, uh, there were only less than 90 trucks have been able to enter Gaza with important food, water, and medical supplies that helped the Gazans survive when before October 7th, over 500 trucks entered every day. So the people are vastly in need and are not getting it. Let's return to the massacre uh, on uh, February 29th on El Rashid Street, Haram El Rashid Street in Gaza, southwestern part of Gaza. Um, many Palestinians received notice that trucks would arrive with flour. And Al Jazeera's Hani uh, Mahmoud said that when the trucks arrived, the people, of course, were kind of desperate trying to get the flour and other goods off the trucks when Israeli troops opened fire. There were a line of tanks out there and they were all opening fire. Over 100 people died. Many were injured. The Israeli military said the dead were trampled and due to a crowd stampede. Uh, and the troops only fired warning shots, fired over the tops of the stampeding people. That is a bold-faced lie. Dr. Salcha El Haud from El Hauda Hospital, who received 176 wounded that day, 80%, that is to say 142, had gunshot wounds, and the rest about 36 or so, had wounds that looked like they got from a stampede. The truth is, according to Al Jazeera's Mr. Ghul, that after opening fire, the Israeli tanks advanced and ran over many dead and injured Gazans. Then Al Jazeera's Bernard Smith added that uh, the Israeli military tried to initially claim blame the crowd on the stampede uh, for the injured people. And then later, uh, the Israeli military officer said, well, uh, as the crowd got closer, uh, the, the, the military uh, soldiers uh, felt threatened as hundreds of people approached. Uh, they felt threatened. But they didn't explain, the military leaders, officers, did not explain how those people posed a threat. What possible threat could there be? Witnesses then confirmed that the stampede happened after the Israeli soldiers started to shoot the people. And Mohammed Ahmed told Sky News that this, unfortunately, would have been a joyful day where people will get relief finally from the famine by receiving the flour it turned in to a bloodbath. The OHCHR, a UN group, said from the 15th of January to the end of February, there have been 14 separate incidences where military, Israeli military uh, shot Palestinians simply seeking food from the aid trucks arriving in Gaza. Oh, 
Let's take a step back and interrogate ourselves about this. The crowd was definitely desperate to find food, water. They're starving. So even if they massed around the, tra the tanks, not even concerned about their own security, again, what threat could they offer uh, armed Israeli soldiers? Now let's take another step back and look at the origins of the entire Palestine-Israel conflict. Some people have pointed the finger at Hamas, accusing it again of creating all the starving leading to the, uh, the conflict, and the military conflict between Hamas and the Israeli military, the acute suffering, etc. Let's not forget the true origin of all this starvation, frustration, pent-up intention, in, in te you know, tensity. The die was cast long before October 7th uh, by the Israeli occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, by the blockade. The true origins of the suffering come from the Israeli occupation. So in spite of what most of the media indicates, it's the, the conflict started long before October 7th, especially after this, the, the, this, the, the War of 67. So since we could conclude that the conflict was directly and indirectly caused, including October 7th attack by the Israeli occupation, the settler violence, certainly enhanced the, the, the stress to the Palestinians, the feeling of going nowhere. The Gazans can't go in, can, very few can get out of Gaza. Same thing with the West Bank. Uh, great settler violence in attacking Palestinians, especially in the West Bank, taking their lands on a daily basis, killing them and getting away with killing and injuring Palestinians. Very few have, Israeli settlers have been prosecuted for crimes against Palestinians in the West Bank. High unemployment, scarce food, scarce water, little mobility, little freedom makes the Palestinians feeling like it's hopeless. No matter what they do, no matter what they study, there's no future for the Palestinians. That is their mindset created by the Israeli occupation. So, Hamas, look at Hamas's point of view, because of all that feels justified, doing away with Israel be, because of the way the Palestinians are being treated. They feel justified. They're avenging the Palestinians, they feel, for a desperate people pushed into a corner. When you push people into a corner, like you corner an animal, they feel surrounded, they feel desperate, and they lash out. The fanatic Zionists and supremacists who started this whole thing, uh, they attack back once the Palestinians react, and using their propaganda, saying, we're, 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 we're acting in self-defense. And they use that, especially the supremacists, Zionist supremacists, as a pretext to push the Palestinians out completely of the Holy Land. So what is the solution? What could there be a solution here? We need together create an independent state of Palestine alongside an independent Israeli state. When accomplished, the Hamas approach would be far less appealing and will get little support because they're called to fight an occupation. The call, Hamas called to fight a blockade or the settlers from um, attacking them. Or as uh, the supremacists and the Zionist settlers have done often, as to invade the uh, Haram al-Sharif area and claim, eventually claim it, 
uh, and replace Al-Aqsa by a, 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 a Jewish temple, the call to fight this would be senseless, nonsense, because the occupation won't exist. On the other side, uh, the attacks by Palestinian fanatic Zionists, the call to attack, the call for self-defense, would, would equally be nonsense because the Palestinians will be occupied with focusing on their own state, you know, making their state stronger, and, and, and not be worried about being attacked or their lands being taken from them as what's happening today. In conclusion, what we really need, we honestly, sincerely desire that all parties together stop this cycle of violence and live in peace and harmony. Thank you.